Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, today we are in lecture seven in this course of probability and stochastic process. Um, in the last uh, lecture, we have um, been in the uh, in the joint probability distribution, and we show how to solve uh, the problem that if you have uh, like a function of uh, let me write here. So comments. Okay. So we mentioned that if we have um like y1 as which is function, function the j1 in some joint distributions up to xn, and then also we have y2, which is another distribution or another mapping another function in up to xn and then we might have ym uh, uh, mapping with the, the same random variables and then we know the joint distribution between x so we have already what is this joint distribution between x1 x2 up to xn and uh, the problem is how to find the joint distribution of y. So we are looking for Fy of y1, y2 up to ym. So um, we explained this in the previous lecture and we said that uh, what we need is to build the uh, Jacobian matrix and also the inverse of each of those. So J1, we bring, for example, like, like uh, uh, x in terms of uh, x in terms of, for example, j inverse of y, and then we j1, and we need j2 inverse of, uh, of y, and so on. So we can then uh, 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 substitute these in the Jacobian matrix. We explained this in the previous, in the previous lecture, and also we tried to find some distributions when you have uh, some like special cases, for example, if we have this y equal to x1 times x2, and we like to find what is the distribution of y, if we know the distribution of x1 and x2. So um, we applied it in the same way, but uh, here we defined also y1, another random variable y1, which is the same equal to x1, and then we build the, the distribution in this way, and which is x, f x, we bought here y1 and for y2 actually, or for y, because here we should have x2, here we should have x2, but x2 from this equation, you can see that x2 equal to y divided by x1. And x1 is the same as y1. So this is the reason that we bought here y divided by y1. And we explained in the previous lecture how to build the Jacobian matrix. And the Jacobian matrix is the, uh, it contains the partial differentiation with each function, with each uh, variable. So we have here the differentiation of J1, the differentiation of J1 with respect to X1, and the partial differentiation of J1 with respect to X2. And now if you make this differentiation with respect to, to X1, you will get X2, as you can see it here. And when you take the differentiation with respect to X2, you will get X1. And the second equation that another time that you take the partial differentiation j uh, j two with respect to to x one and again with x two and you can see that y one equal to x one so when you take the differentiation with respect to x one it will be one and when you take the differentiation with respect to x two we don't have here x two so the result will be zero then we need to determine to find the determinant of this matrix and then we find what is the determinant here. And you need to take the inverse, the absolute value of the of the inverse of the determinant, and we got it in this way. And then we build the distribution of of y. And as I explained also several times in the previous lecture, that what we have now is calculus. When um, we have in the beginning, we start with the probability. Probability theory, probability distribution, probability mass function, probability density function, commutative distribution function, and all these are in the probability domain. 
after that, when we take the expectation or when we when we make the random variable and we mention that the random variable is the mapping between the event space to the number, real number space. And once we have the probability uh, 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 like distribution, then what we have, uh, as you can see, is calculus. All, all what we had is calculus. It's not, um, if, if you see some complication, it is a complication of math, not because of probability. It is because that you need maybe to revise some of the basic ba or, or, or not some calculus uh, like uh, the integration, differentiation, matrix analysis. And by the way, uh, during this course, as you can see, we try all the time to to uh, like handle some of these uh, math, uh, math requirements. After that, here we uh, gave also this example that try to find the distribution of y uh, if y equal to the maximum between x1 and x2. Maximum between x1 and x2. The problem with this, pro with this uh, mapping that it is not differentiable. Maximum of x1 and x2 is not a differentiable like uh, uh, relation. So since it is not differentiable, you will not be able to find the Jacobian matrix that we need like this one. So how to find the Jacobian matrix of this one? It is it is not easy to find because it is not differentiable. So it is not tractable to have or, or feasible to have the Jacobian matrix. Of course, we can approximate it with some limit, but still, you, you, we don't have as exact uh, formula to have the Jacobian matrix. How to handle this problem? We show different way to to solve this problem, and maybe I go to the to the uh, whiteboard so we can write it down again. Okay, stop sharing, and I will share the yes the whiteboard. So the idea here that uh, uh, we have the relation is given by y equal to the maximum between x1 and x2. So x1 is any random variable which, which might have any distribution, and x2 also is another random variable which has another distribution or different distribution, or, or it can be also the same distribution. And what we want to see now, we want to find what is the distribution of y. Okay, and we assumed here that we know the distribution, the joint distribution between x1 and x2. So we know the distribution between x1 and x2. Maybe when you read the book uh, or the chapter, you, you can see that sometimes I use this bold x or bold y. A bold x means that vector. So bold x here, it means that it is a vector contains x1 and x2. So it is a vector, okay? Now we have y equal to the maximum of x1 and x2. How to find the distribution of y? Actually, we started with a with like, simple way that uh, uh, we built the CDF, the cumulative distribution function of y. So the, the CDF of y is the probability, which, which can write it like fy of y0 equal to the probability, okay, that y to be less than or equal to y0. This is the CTF, as we know, okay? And now, y is the maximum of x1 and x2, the maximum. For example, if x1 equal to one and x2 equal to three, then y equal to three. You take the maximum between them, okay? So if, if the maximum is less than y0, if the maximum is less than of y0, it implies that every random variable must be less than or equal to y0. Because the maximum is less than y0, then every number here will be less than or equal to y0. So this means that this will be the probability, okay, the probability that x1 to be less than or equal to y0 and x2 also must be less than or equal to y0. Both of them must be less than or equal to y of 0. Okay? Of course, we can find this by using joint distribution function. So if we have this fx and y, then we can make this as integration from minus infinity 
up to y0, another integration from minus infinity up to y0, okay? And then we put the joint distribution function that if x of x1 and x2, then we have dx1, dx2, and this will be, this will give us f y of y0, okay? And now we are looking for the distribution of y. So the distribution of y, if y of y equal to the differentiation of if y of y0, we make the differentiation with respect. It is not partial, it is just normal, distrib normal dist uh, 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 differentiation. Okay. D, y0, and after that we substitute in the state of y0, we put y. So we put y0 equal to y. Okay, th this is the process. Now you find the probability density function of, of y. This could be further simplified if x1 and x2 are independent. If x1 and x2 are independent, then simply f of y0 for the norm for the probability for the random variable y equal to because those are independent you remember that when they are independent you can separate them in this way so it becomes probability of x1 to be less than or equal to y0 times probability that x2 to be less than or equal to y0 what is this this is the cdf of x1 so if this will be the cdf of x at x1 okay sorry okay I just remove this line. So f x of y zero times of x one times f of x two at y zero. So this will be the the CDF of y zero. Okay. Now, how to find the probability density function of y? As I said, that we differentiate this with respect to with respect to y zero. Then we substitute in a state of y0, we put y. So, uh, of course, now you have two multiplication. So we, we differentiate uh, uh, the first and we keep the second. And then we differentiate the second and we keep the first. So if we di differentiate the first, we will get the distribution of x1. But here we put, we put y, okay, times f x2. I will explain what I mean here. Just... Just a minute. And then a plus, this will be f of x1 of y times f of x2 of y. Okay. So uh, just let me go back to some calculus. As, as I said, I was, as promised. So I will try from time to time to go back to some calculus just to remind you about these issues. So I assume that you have a function that y equal to uh, x squared cosine x, sorry. Okay, cosine, for example, or let, let, yes, x squared times, let's say, sine x squared. And I asked you to find what is dy over dx. Just a calc basic calculus uh, 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 reminding. So this will be, in the first one, you differentiate the first element and you keep the second one. So differentiating x squared, it will be 2x times sine x squared, okay? A plus, you keep the first that you differentiated before and you differentiate the second. Differentiating the second because this is a function of x squared, okay? So here you need to differentiate first what is inside this function and you keep it outside. So it will become like 2x, okay? times cosine x squared, okay? So if, if we have, for example, let's say uh, we have sine x squared, how it works? Let's, let's say that u equal to x squared, okay? Then it will be sine u, and this, let's say this equal to z. Now, now, um, dz, this is called chained rule, dz divided by dx equal to, 
dz by du du by dx. So you can see that du cancel du, this one cancel this one, and then we have dz divided by or or differentiated with respect to dx. Then dz differentiated with du equal to what this one? The 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 integration, uh, the differentiation of sine is cosine. So this will be cosine u. And what is this is u equal to x squared. What is the differentiation of u with respect to x is 2x. Then this u is equal to x squared. So it becomes 2x times cosine x squared. So this is the this term. Okay. So this is the way that how we make the differentiation if we have two different functions. So in general, if you have y equal to j1 of x times j2 of x, then the differentiation of y with respect to x equal to the differentiation of j1 of x with respect to x times j2 of x plus j1 of x multiplied by differentiation of j2 of x with respect to dx. Okay, this is in general. So from time to time, we we'll we try to go back to those basics in order to remember or to as a review for this basic calculus. Okay, now let us go uh, uh, to another way or to another problem. If if I asked you to find the distribution of y equal to minimum of x1 and x2, not the maximum. If we look to the minimum now, how could we find the distribution of y if the relation is with respect to the minimum of x1 and x2. Actually, here we can we can perform just a little trick in order to find the solution. How? Okay. Again, we build the CDF of y, which is f y of y0 is equal to the, the probability that y to be less than or equal to y0. Okay. And then this means that the probability that the minimum of x1 and x2 to be less than or equal to y0. Okay. I, I, I can't now perform the previous that I did with the maximum because the minimum, if the minimum is less than or equal to y0, it is not necessary. It, it, it doesn't imply that everyone must be less than or equal to y0. Okay. What I will modify here simply that I will say that this equal to one minus the probability that the minimum of x1 and x2 to be and x2 to be this then equal to y0 okay because um okay let me explain this step how how it comes uh, uh, the probability okay the probability that for example for any random variable y to be less than or equal to y0, okay, this equal to the one minus the probability, probability that y to be greater than y0. Why? Why we did that? Because probability of y to be less than or equal to y0 plus probability that y to be greater than y0, this must be one. Because the total probability is one. The total probability is always one. So uh, less than any number and the probability because y is a real number. So it must be something between minus infinity up to infinity. Okay. This means that the, the, the summation of this probability must be one. And because of that, I, I can make this a step. Okay. Now let, let me go back to the, to, to the problem. That, so the, the problem now that becomes that if y of y0, it can it could be represented like one minus the probability that the minimum of x1 and x2 to be as as we as we show it here to be uh sorry this will be greater than okay so it, this will be greater than y0 okay this will be greater than y0 okay now uh, if the minimum of x1 and x2 is greater than y0, the minimum, the least one 
is greater than some number, this implies that every random variable must be greater than y0. Then this will be 1 minus the probability of x1 to be greater than, by the way, you can put equal. Or you can, uh, because in the continuous random variable, it doesn't matter. If it is continuous and it is a smooth, uh, like a random variable, it means that it is exists everywhere. So it can be just greater than or greater than or equal. It, do it, do it, um, it doesn't make difference, okay? If it is smooth and continuous, okay? But if you want, you can keep just greater than or greater than or equal to. It doesn't matter, okay? So this will be y0 and x2 to be also greater than or equal to y0. Okay, so if x1 and x2, again, they are independent, this will be 1 minus the probability that x1 to be greater than or equal to y0 times probability that x2 to be greater than or equal to y0. Of course, you remember from the first lecture that this will be valid if and only if x1 and x2 both are independent random variables. Okay? Yes. So, what is this? Actually, probability that x1 greater than or equal to y0 is the same is the same as 1 minus probability that x1 less than or equal to y0. And also, this will be the same. This will be 1 minus probability that x2 to be less than or equal to y0. Okay. Again, what is this? This one is the commutative distribution function of x1 at y0. And this one is the commutative distribution function of x2 at y0. Okay. Then the distribution. The CDF of y at y0 equal to 1 minus this number, which is 1 minus f of x1 at y0, okay, multiplied by 1 minus f of x2 at y0. Okay, so now I am looking for the probability this function of y. So probability this function of y, again, is just the differentiation of this equation with respect to y0, and then we substitute by y0 by y. This will be the differentiation of 1 is 0, and then the differentiation of this number, it will, it will give us the probability DC function of x1 at y at y, but this will be by negative, so negative and negative will be positive. So this will be f of x1, the distribution of x1, but we substitute instead of x by y, which is the, uh, we put y here, and then multiply it by this number, 1 minus f x2 of y, okay, plus, then we differentiate this one, and we keep this one, so it will be f of x2 at y, multiplied by 1 minus f of x of x, uh, one at y. This gives us the distribution, the distribution of of y. Okay. Now uh, you might say uh, it is just math, so we like to see some example to, uh, that we can apply. Okay. Uh, if we assume that, if we take this example, that um, um, assume that x one and x two both are exponential distribution with lambda one and lambda two. So f of x1 of, 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 of x1 equal to lambda 1 e minus lambda 1 x1. And also f of x2 of x2 equal to lambda 2 e minus lambda 2 x2. Okay. Now we have this relation y equal to the minimum of x1 and x2. And in your research, you find that uh, you need to find the distribution of y. You need to find the distribution of y. Okay. Uh, by the way, this is important, for example, in, in successive uh, noise cancellation or, uh, 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 or um, in, in, in some terms of telecommunication, 
uh, the received signal or the received symbols, they are uh, uh, they, they arrive to the receiver like random process. Okay, so we have some. We need sometimes to find what is the distribution of the minimum one. Okay, and sometimes we need to find the distribution of the maximum. The maximum signal, the received signal. What is the distribution of the maximum? If we know that the the distribution of the minimum or, or, or the distribution of every one of them, they are Riley distribution, for example, and um, every one arrived from a different path. So every one it has different strength. So in this case, where I am looking or I am interested to find the distribution of the minimum one. When when I find uh, uh, Fy of the minimum one, then of course, as you know, we can find the mean, we can find the variance, we can find many other moments related to that to that random process or random variable. Okay. So now after this result, actually, we can directly apply. We can directly apply our our uh, uh, the result. So uh, how to apply them? Let me take it one by one. So first, we can compute the CDF of each one of them. So we know that the CDF of the exponential distribution, for example, x1 of y0 is equal to what? Equal to the integration from 0 to y0. And we have here lambda 1 e minus lambda 1 x1 dx. Okay. Then when you take the integration, as you know, then you divide by lambda 1 and you have minus signal. So we have here minus e minus lambda 1 x1, and the integration limit is from 0 to y0. And this gives us the result that when you put 0, it will be 1. So it will be 1 minus e minus lambda 1 y0. This is this will be this will be the uh, uh, the CDF the CDF of x1 at at y0. Okay, and in the same way we can find f of x2 at y0, and this will be also one minus e minus lambda two times y0. Okay. So now we have fx1, we have fx2, we have also the distribution of x1, we have the distribution of x2, then we can build our, uh, we can build our uh, probability function by substituting in this equation. So now we have to put uh, f of x1, so uh, f of x1, which is actually e minus lambda, and instead of x1, we put y, okay, times 1 minus as you can see it here, 1 minus f of x2 of y. Where is f of x2? This is 1. Yeah. Okay, it will be 1 minus 1 minus minus plus e minus lambda 2. This is lambda 1. Lambda 2 times y. Okay. So actually 1 cancels 1. So we can remove all this. Okay. So actually what we will have is just simply it will be e minus lambda 2 y. Okay. And... The second term is plus, as you can see, plus, and now we substitute for the other. So it will be actually the same. It will be plus e minus lambda 1 y times e minus lambda 2 y. And now they are some the same, so it will be 2 e minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 times y. This will be the, uh, uh, the distribution of y. This will be the distribution of y when y equal to the minimum of of y of sorry of x1 x1 and x2 okay um uh, this now we find that how to find the minimum the maximum and but in general uh, uh, if the function is differentiable so i we we, we can use that jacobian um, relation and as we saw but also you can use the same actually for example if y equal to any function in in x x can be can be uh, uh, like vector or can be single element it doesn't matter okay and now you are interested to find f y of y so you can apply the same concept so um f y of y zero equal to the integration okay uh, uh or let's say that sorry 
probability of y this is equal to y zero and this equal to the probability of of a j of x to be less than or equal to y zero okay and now what is the probability that j of x equal to less than or equal to y zero it means that you uh, you, uh, uh, you need to find because this is now is function in in uh, 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 in random variables x okay so you can now apply the same concept that we have applied before so we need to find what is the probability of any function to be less than or equal to y uh, or 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 y zero actually okay after that of course uh, 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 we need to find the inverse for example if this is a single element so this will be the probability of x if it is a single element, not multiple element, x to be less than or equal to a j inverse of y0. Okay, and this probability is equal to integration from minus infinity up to j inverse of y0, fx of x, dx, and then we can find the, 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 the CDF of y0. After that, we differentiate this with respect to x as we showed uh, before. Um, let me go back to the to the lecture slides, and after that today, I I, I like also to show you how to solve some symbolic uh, difficult uh, uh, analytical problems by using by using Octave or MATLAB, of course. So, but before that, let me check what we have else. So, uh, this is the minimum, and also uh, you will find many examples. Uh, uh, what I solved now on the whiteboard is not in the examples, but you can find more examples about that. For example, here you can you need to find what is the maximum x1 and x2, and it was given here that x1 is uniform distribution from zero to one, uniform from zero to one, and x2 is is exponential distribution with lambda equal to one. Then here uh, in the example we solve it. Uh, to find the probability is a function of y, the probability that y to be greater than or equal to one, and y probability that y less than or equal to one, okay, and also the mean and variance of y, and also we prove the results by using simulation, okay. So now you can you can see that it is solved in details. So I recommend you to to study the examples always, okay. Um. Uh, also, try all the time, always try to write the code. Try to write the code yourself and try to understand how the code works. Of course, we explained before how to calculate the probabilities in the previous lectures, but it is always good that you practice yourself with these um, uh, Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, here we have another example. I added that if we have two random variables, x1 and x2. x1 has a uniform distribution from 0 to 1, and x2, it has also uniform distribution, but now from minus 1 to 2. And now you need to find the probability, uh, the distribution of y, where y equal to the maximum between x1 and, and x2. So uh, we solve it in details, as you can see that I just I applied the, the formula. So you can see that it is very interesting to see how the distribution will be. It is very interesting. So you can see that the distribution of y was from zero to one, uh, so, sorry, of x1. And the distribution of, of uh, x2 was, sorry, was from minus one up to two. Of course, here will be third, okay? And now y equal to the maximum between x1 and x2. So the distribution of y, it has been in this way. So you can see it is zero if y is than zero. It is expected, of course. And then uh, at y equal to zero, it becomes third. So we, we start from here, from third. Then it will be increased as a linear up to, if, if uh, y equal to one, it will be two plus one. It, it will be rise up to three this way up to one then it will go like uh, 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 after y equal to one up to two it will be third so it will be in this way 
okay so it is from third and this will reach to one and here we will have from zero up to two so this will be the distribution of of y which looks which looks actually odd compared to the other these two distributions and actually you can you can approve that by using uh, uh, simulation as we will see uh, after that there's another example where we asked you to find the minimum between x1 and x2 the general formula actually this is what i now i explained on the white on the whiteboard um, the next uh, 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 section that I will cover today, inshallah, is the characteristic function. The characteristic function in uh, uh, like probability theory, it is one of the important functions, especially for those who are working in like um, um, an environment, either in, in telecommunication or in also in, uh, in power systems or in systems in general, in electrical systems in general, many times we need to have uh, or to study the behavior, the randomness behavior or the stochastic behavior of some parameters. So the characteristic functions works here uh, as, as a very important tool for us. But before I go there, I like first to take you to another journey with the, uh, with the octave. So um, to show one of the interesting properties in octave or MATLAB that you can, you can use in order to solve some kind of analytical expressions or symbolic expressions. So let me stop this one for a while and I will open the octave just yes. Few minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where is Octave? This is my Octave. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me just. Um, we we showed before this Octave. Now, uh, this version that I have now is 8.3. Uh, I think last week they also updated it to 8.4. The, the, the latest version is 8.4. Um, of course, Octave works under Windows or Linux or also uh, um, uh, the OS, that um, uh, MacBook. But for the MacBook, actually, it has always problems in the MacBook because of the restrictions of the MacBook operating system. But uh, for Windows, it works fine, generally. Of course, because it is a free version, it is a free version, it is, it is open source, so um, it will not be as smooth as, as MATLAB. But the good thing with, with this Octave that it is completely free, so you can use it without may, sometimes feeling that you you uh, not good because using packet version of this uh, MATLAB. Um, uh, actually, also my book, this is the reason that my book is based on Octave. So I am trying all the time to uh, encourage my students to use always open sources. Okay, because this MATLAB is very expensive. It is, uh, I mean, it, also for students, you, you need to pay like 100 euro and uh, to renew it that every year or something that you need to pay. For teachers, they have to pay 500 euros and with, with a restriction that you are not allowed to use it for research. It is only for, for the class. So I, I, I believe that it is too expensive. And there is, uh, if we have always some free alternative, it is better to go to go to the to the pre alternate. Uh, okay, uh, we showed before many examples how to use uh, octave in finding the probability in finding in solving some problems. But uh, what I would I, I like to show you today is how to use it to find symbolic calculations. Okay. Um, First thing, you need to upload the package of uh, simple calculations. You write it like the, this way. Package, load, then you write symbolic. Okay. Now, the symbolic uh, uh, package has been uploaded. Um, you know that in MATLAB, we have toolboxes. In Octave, they call them packages. 
okay? And every package that you, you want to use, you need to load it. In, in MATLAB, uh, uh, all functions of, of the uh, toolboxes are available by default. In Octave, it is not the case. In Octave, you, you need to upload every package by itself. Okay, and it is free. Everything is free. For example, if you write package list, you can see the package that I have in my computer. So video package, uh, like uh, 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 networking package, uh, linear algebra, optimization, uh, fuzzy logic, everything is already in, in, in packages. Uh, when, when you install Octave, all these packages will be uh, installed automatically. Okay, but you need to upload it if you if you want to use it. If you ask it why they do that, actually because this Octave is open source. Open source means that there are tens or maybe hundreds of people working to develop it. And those people, they are not very well organized. So everyone in, in, in different country, or uh, uh, this is based on volunteer work. So everyone just contributing without getting salary or something, okay? Then, there might be some functions they are used in 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 two different like uh, uh, package, okay? In MATLAB because MATLAB is 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 uh, is not free, and they got hundreds of millions in, in in based on their application from from companies from people and from individuals, from societies from industry they they got a lot of money. Then everyone working there working uh, according to some very strict. A procedure here on Octave it is not because of that uh, to minimize the conflict between functions they made that you upload the uh, uh, the package that only that you need so if there's two functions they they are used in two different packages they will not conflict with with, with each other okay uh, okay now I I uploaded the um the, the symbolic then I can define our symbols. It is the same way that we do in MATLAB. So, for example, I define x equal to symbol of x. Sorry. Yeah. You can see now it is little time uh, in order to apply the package, but it, after that it will be faster. So, yes. Now it has defined x you can see that they use python uh, as, as sim by which is a, a python package uh, for simple calculations so it is it is a connection between python and and octave so now we 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 define x we can define for example another uh, a symbolic maybe maybe we can define a another symbol a okay so you can see now it, it becomes faster Okay, now uh, if you if you want to take the integration of x times sine x, so the integration of x times sine a times x, okay, and you want to this integration with respect to x, with respect to x, you can see that it gives you that if a is not equal to zero, you can see now in the in the relation it says that. If a is not equal to zero, the relation is, or the integration gives you minus x times cosine ax divided by a plus sine ax divided by two. If a is not equal to zero. If a equal to zero, this gives you zero. Of course, because if a equal to zero, as you can see here in this one, if a equal to zero, it will be always, uh, 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 yes, if a equal to zero, sine, sine zero is zero, so it will be, the result will be zero. So you can see that it is very nice that it can solve for you some simple calculations, some some difficult integrations. For example, let us take another one. If we have integration of x times exponent of sine x. Of course, I don't think that this one it has cross-form solution. Let us see. Now, um, yes, I need to cover the other one, yes, sorry. X of the power, yes, of sine X and X. So this one, you can see, because the, uh, uh, this integration, it doesn't have a closed form solution. 
So it gives you just the integration x times, it gives it to you as it is. But if you make, if you want to find finite integration, for example, from zero up to pi, okay, from zero up to pi. Yes, it gives you that integration of from zero up because by maybe it is up to one. Yeah, integration from zero. It, it has not evaluated, but you can also evaluate it actually. Simplify. Okay, let's just do this in this way. If it is x square. Yes, so you can see that because uh, uh, x uh, x uh, times x exponent of sine x it doesn't have any form internally, so it has skipped it. But if you have like x times e of the power x square uh, uh, with respect to x from 0 to 1, it gives you the solution in a closed form. Now, what if this like minus x square, minus x square, and we bought it from zero up to infinity. It gives you half. So this integration from x times exponent minus x squared, and you take the integration from zero up to infinity, the result is equal to 0. 0.5. Okay, uh, if we say that y equal to cosine a times x of the power of x plus plus sine x. Okay, now this is y. Okay, integration of y. And with respect to x, and from zero, y. Okay, this is y. Wait for team, yes. Okay. Now it 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 uh, it was not able to evaluate this closed form integration because again it has a cosine which is not uh, a cosine of the power x. It doesn't have a closed form formula. But if we let me go and remove that. Sorry. Yes. If instead of x we said that it is of the power five. Okay, now the integration of y okay yes you can see it is very very complicated integration result as you can see it so and if it is from zero to pi yes and if we define let us define A because it is it is hard because A is not defined. But if we define A, that equal to one example. Now it has not taken it because it takes A as a symbolic, so it will not change it. So what I need, I need to change it from here actually to put it one. Okay. And then we take the integration again. Yes, it gives you two. You can see that it gives you Two. Okay. Now, if I, uh, you can. By the way, you can use uh, a many functions like simplify. If I said help, same point. Okay. Help. Simplify. It is part of the symbolic, but what you can do. Okay. Let us go help. Documentation on disk or online. Let us see what is on disk. Documentation online. Okay, I, I I guess that you don't see my screen now. I just I will stop and share the screen that we have so you can see that if if uh, if you uh, make the help then you can see the help of of uh, of octave so you can find all functions and what they are doing 
and also you can go to the symbolic uh, uh, package and you can find they have like maybe more than 50 or 60 uh, uh, functions there like simplification like uh, expansion solving uh, um, like some closed form um, uh, higher polynomials and also uh, solving optimization problems there are a lot of uh, you can see that it is very big uh, file i think it is more than 1000 page of this uh, how to use the the optimization you can see linear opt programming quadratic programming nonlinear programming linear least square statistics a, a, a lot a lot of things signal processing uh, system utility um, many many things are available in this in this toolbox uh, of this package so i will stop and maybe i will go back to octave just to show a few more things for for you that um, um, uh, you can actually load you can load the another packages for example package sorry what happened yeah yes package load control if you upload the control uh, package so now you can define as matlab so you can say that uh, for example um let's say uh, z equal to uh, transfer function tf of one and you can define the we so you can see that this is this is the transfer function that you have laplace transform if you want to have it in in discrete in Z transform, so you just put it here the sampling time. So it is now it is in Z transform, it is discrete. Okay. And you can find, for example, this the step response or the impulse, impulse of 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 Y1, for example. And then ah oh, sorry, the impulse of Z, I, we call it Z. Yeah. So maybe you don't see it now, but I will share. Let me, I will share the screen instead of the octave. So you can see the results. Yes, screen. So maybe you can see now, this is the, the result by using the impulse that I, I did. So I can close it. If you want to see the step function or the, uh, I think it is a little like this, step of Z. Yes, so this is the step function of Z. So, and you can make all the control functions that it is in MATLAB, you can use them also uh, with Octave. So Octave, uh, um, Octave is, is, is uh, more, st um, uh, of course, it is not more stable than MATLAB. MATLAB is still much better, much faster. But the nice thing here that it is more secure because this hacked version, uh, which is broken version, usually they came with viruses. With, it might have spy or uh, like um, uh, codes there. So, but this one is um, open source available. So you can you can always use it. Uh, in the same way that you are using MATLAB, uh, either control you you can you can upload the signal processing if you if you package load signal. They have a lot of also functions like like uh, FFT inverse FFT, uh, making filters different kind of filters. Many things they are available. Thousands of functions available in those in, on in all these packages. Okay, so uh, um, from time to time, I every lecture I will try to revise few features of this octave. Also, it, it could be seen as a reminder for you for the basics of programming. Okay. Yes, we stop sharing here, and I think now it is time for uh, break. After the break, we will come back to the uh, to the characteristic function. We will start step by step how to build this characteristic function and what the features of using characteristic functions. After that, um, uh, we uh, take the bounds of some bounds of probability in cases that we don't know the probability DC function 
how could we have some conclusion about the process that we are we are dealing with so we will see us uh, that as well and uh, today inshallah we will uh, we will we will be done with the first part of this course in the basic part the, the first part with related to probability and random variable the next part which starts inshallah next uh, week we will start with the stochastic process if this signal is a time series if the random signal is a time series instead of being a random variable how could we deal with it how could we uh, find for example correlation functions and other things related to random processes now we will take inshallah 20 minutes as as before uh, so you can relax a little bit take have your coffee and after 20 minutes inshallah we come again inshallah شكرا بارك الله فيك بارك الله ان شاء الله uh, we'll come back to the presentation today lecture today and uh, as i mentioned that we go to the characteristic function uh, what is the purpose of using characteristic function applications and the concepts behind the characteristic functions so maybe we start with the uh, chapter itself. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as you can see now, uh, the, uh, the characteristic function actually is the Fourier transform of the probability density function. And as you can see from this equation, that uh, the characteristic function is given like, for example, phi or any symbol. Is that if x at t, okay, equal to the expectation of e of uh, jxt equal to integration from minus infinity up to infinity e of the power i or jxt times the probability density function dx. Okay, let us um, try to find what what is the concept, what that means. Okay, we will go to the <clears throat> to the whiteboard Uh, if you remember, we mentioned that the expectation of any function is the averaging of that function over the probability density function. So it means that if you want to take the expectation of any function uh, g of x equal to the integration from minus infinity up to infinity, g of x, f x of x, dx. So we explained this in, before in the expectation concept. Now, if we take the expectation of E, the power, like uh, I or J, X, T. Again, you just substitute this here. So it'd be the integration from S infinity to infinity. E, J, X, T, F, X of X, D, X. Okay. Actually, if you look to this function, th this integration, this is the Fourier transform with, with positive exponent because in Fourier transform, this was negative. This one, it was negative, but here we have it with positive exponent, okay? But it is the Fourier transform. If you take the Fourier transform of this function, the probability DC function, and just substitute where is J and you put minus J, then simply that you will have the Fourier transform of that uh, function, then you will get the characteristic function. This is called the characteristic the characteristic function of, of t. Because now we take the integration with respect to x, then it becomes in t. You may ask why we need such transformation. Why we need such transformation. Okay, let us have this formula that y equal to x1 plus x2 that we have seen 
before. Of course, you can extend it like x3, x4, up to xn. But let, let us start with the simple one, x1 plus x2. And x1 and x2 both are independent. We showed in the last lecture that the distribution of this y, the, the distribution of y will be will be the convolution of f of x1 at x1 convolved with f of x2 and at x2. This will be, of course, you, you, you take the inverse of x1 with respect to y in this in this case. But anyhow, I'm not going to go in this in this way, but but this will be the distribution of of the result. So the distribution will be the convolution of between the distributions of x1 and x2. If you have n number of summation, then you will have n fold convolution integral. And actually, convolution integral is not that easy to perform in closed form. Okay. Um, this relation of summation relation is very commonly used in in uh, or needed in um, a, a, a lot of practical applications. In wireless communication, the additive noise is added. We might have different sources of information. So information, each information, it has certain distribution and they are added together. Um, uh, so the addition or subtraction is very, is very widely used in, in different kinds of applications. So always we need to evaluate the distribution of Y in the case of summation. But the problem of summation, we need all the time to make this convolution. And making the, a lot of convolutions or the, the, the closed form of the convolution is not easy to perform, as you know from linear system. And also, if we have enough time, uh, because actually chapter three in this book is related to linear system analysis, but, but we, we might not have time to go through that. But anyhow, uh, we know from characteristic function or from Fourier transform that the convolution integral becomes multiplication in the Fourier transform. We know that from basic linear system, but also we can uh, uh, sh uh, show it here in simple way. So what is the characteristic function of Y? The characteristic function of Y of Y equal to the expected value of what? Of E of J Y T. Okay. And y equal to x1 plus x2. So this will be expected value of e j x1 plus x2 times t. Okay. And this equal to expected value of e of j x1 t plus j x2 t. Remember, a a plus b e to the power a plus b equal to e a times e b. Okay, this means that this will be the expected value of e j x one t times e j x two t. We said here that x one and x two are independent. Okay, then we can we can that uh, separate the expectation when they are uh, independent. This will be expected value of e j x one t times e the power j x two t. Okay, what is this? This is the characteristic function of x one x one of t times the characteristic function of x2 of t. This gives us the characteristic function of y of t. It is as simple as this one. It is very simple, extremely simple, becomes the, the, uh, 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 this multiplication. And instead of going through the convolution or the convolution integral, now with the characteristic function, it becomes simply like multiplication. Actually, this is, it can be generalized. For example, if y equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to xn, okay? So in other words, it is summation of xi from i equal to one up to n. Then the characteristic function, 
the characteristic function of y at t equal to the expected value of e j. Then we have y. y is the summation of x i. Okay, and this is multiplied by t. Again, exponent of summation equal to the multiplications of the uh, of the x i. So this will be. And they are all independent, but let us do it step by step. So it, it will be j x one t multiplied e j x two t multiplied by e j x three t multiplied multiplied until e j x n t. And since all of them they are independent as it is given here, then we can make it like expected value of e j x one t multiplied by expected value of e j x 2 t and this up to expected value of x n t and this of course will be the the characteristic function of y will be the multiplication of these of, of all these characteristic functions so it will be phi uh, like x1 of t multiplied by phi x2 of t until multiplied by phi x n of t and this we can do it in more compact form by using the symbol of of multiplication of product so the product from i equal to one up to n then phi x i of t so that the uh, instead of using n fold convolution it becomes n multiplication which is much 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 easier than evaluating the the, the integration the n fold integration in general okay so uh the second question now now okay i might convince you that using characteristic function makes it easier to calculate the distribution of the uh, summation because now when you got this phi y if you are interested to find still the probability DC function of y so what of y of y will be the inverse Fourier transform of this characteristic function, which is given like integration, and this will be like, like like this phi uh, a y uh, uh, of t that 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 you you uh, you got, and then you multiply it by e minus j, in this case y t, and you take the integration with respect to t, then you will have the the correct the, the the probability DC function, but sometimes even you don't need the probability DC function uh, because actually this is the second property of the characteristic function that we can use it to find the moments. What 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 are the moments? The moments are the mean, the average, the average of the square, the average of the cube, the average of the fourth uh, 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 like um, uh, power, and so on. So those moments actually we, um, uh, we use them to evaluate the behavior and the performance of any random process or random variable. Okay, what I mean, if you want to com compute the expected value, the average, which is mu x, the average would be the integration x times the distribution of x, sorry, x dx. If you want to find the expected value square or the average of the squared values, integration x square fx of x dx. This is what we, we, we have already seen. If you want to find the expected value of x cube, then, then again, integration, of, of course, for my spin to infinity, everyone, x cube fx of x. And in general, in general, the expected value for any, those called moments, by the way, those called moments. So if you want to find the expected value of the nth mo moment, this will be the integration from minus infinity to infinity, x to the power n, fx of x dx. So again, actually, the, such evaluation for large n can be also very complicated in some, in some cases. Okay, let us go back to the characteristic function. The characteristic function phi x of t is equal to what? Is equal to the integration from minus infinity to infinity e j x 
t times the distribution x of x of x dx. So if you have certain fx of x, and maybe you go to the tables of time of Fourier transform, and then you was able to find the Fourier transform of this of this function. Maybe for example, let us it, it was sync function, for example, of of uh, let's say uh, a t or something. So now you have the characteristic function of that of that of that distribution. Okay, so you can find that you can of course solve it yourself by hand, or you can find it on the tables because Fourier transform is very old, as you know. Uh, it is now hundreds of years. It it is it is well uh, used in electrical engineering. So we have a lot of tables. It has it has been that we have uh, the theory behind Fourier transform is very well known. Okay, so now you can convert any uh, uh, um, uh, of, of uh, like probability DC function. You can have it is characteristic function maybe in a closed form. Or sometimes, of course, we don't have the closed form, and then we can have some approximation for that probability DC function. Okay. Uh, what happened if you put here t equal to zero? X at t when t equal to zero. What will happen? If you put t equal to zero, this will be the integration. From minus infinity up to infinity, and here you put t this t equal to zero. E of the power zero is one. Then this fx of x dx and the total area under any uh, probability function equal to one. Then this will be one. So now you have this property. The property that if you substitute the probability DC function with t, uh, sorry, the, the characteristic function with t equal to zero, you must get one. Okay, this could be nice quiz. For example, if I bring certain that uh, characteristic function and I ask you, if is this valid characteristic function or not? You just substitute with t with equal to uh, zero. If you got one, yes, it can be. If you didn't get one, then it cannot be a, a, a characteristic function. Okay, this is the first property that we got. What is the second property? What happens if you differentiate your characteristic function with respect to t? So if you differentiate with respect to t, what will happen? OK, let us see. This will be the integration. We have integration from minus infinity up to infinity. We have here the differentiation with e j x t times the probability dc function of x dx of course the probability dc function is not function in t t is not here at all t is only in this exponent and the integration is, is with respect to x so mathematically it is possible that you take this dif uh, differentiation inside the integration Okay, so what what will be the result in this case? Differentiate e of the power j x t simply will be will be minus infinity to infinity. Then we will have j x times e j x t times f x of x d x. This will be the the integration. Of course, j is equal to square root of of minus one, which is actually just number. So we can take it out to the integration, okay? Complex number, of course, or the imaginary number. Okay, now, what happens if you substitute with t equal to zero? So the differentiation of phi of t dt, but we substitute at t equal to zero. What will happen? If you substitute at t equal to zero, e of the bar zero equal to one, then this will be j. We take j outside, then will be x, fx of x dx and the integration from minus infinity up to infinity this is what what you will get when substitute t equal to zero okay what is this what is this number now or this integration this integration is nothing but the expectation of x this will be the expectation this is the mean of x this will be the mean and this mean multiplied by j 
the complex imaginary number, and this will be the differentiation of the characteristic function with respect with t at t equal to zero. Okay, this means that the average expectation of x equal to one divided by the complex number times the differentiation of phi of t dt and at t equal to zero. Okay, so now we find another uh, useful property of this characteristic function. So the characteristic function is not only simplifying the summation of random variables, but it also offers us a way to find the, uh, the mean of any uh, uh, averaging or the averaging of, of a certain random variable that we have or we know it is probability DC function. So now you don't need any more to evaluate this integration. So if you have the characteristic function, simply you differentiate it. You know that dif differentiation is always much easier than integration. Not always, but most in most cases. Okay. So now when we differentiate this characteristic function, and then you substitute in T by zero, and you divide by J, then you get the mean of that process. Okay. What if I take the second differentiation? Okay, so the second differentiation of phi of t, remember now that you have phi of t already, d t squared, the second differentiation. Okay, let us go back to this one. So now if you differentiate this another time, if you differentiate this one another time, means that you differentiate two times, then of course we have j outside, then the differentiation of this another time, the first differentiation of x is equal to one, then it will be e j x t, okay? And this is the first differentiation, and the second differentiation, it will be plus, a plus, it will be x square, this j again, so it will be j x square e j x t, and this is the second differentiation of this one. And all this is multiplied by, by j. Okay? And now, if you put t equal to zero, then here you will get one, here you will get one, then here you will get x, x square. Okay? And this means that, as now we can go, and actually this you can continue it as, as much as you like. So if we go to the to the picture. So you can see that what I am explaining now, uh, uh, I, forget, I forgot to mention in the uh, whiteboard that the same way that you can do it with the probability mass function, but with the probability mass function, because it is discrete, so we call it Z transform in this case, not for a transform, it is the Z transform, and it will be the same as you can see. Of course, I, I will give a numerical example today. Uh, uh, about these things, but let us go step by step now. Uh, this is what I explained already, sorry, in the, okay, yes. So, the differentiation, as you can see, as I show now, so the expected value of x is the differentiation of the characteristic function with respect to t, and you substitute at t equal to zero. And now, by taking the second differentiation, Okay, but by making the second differentiation, what you will get, you will get this one that I now I showed to you. So you will get minus integration of minus infinity up to infinity x squared fx of x dx, and this will lead to the to the expected value of x squared. So it means that the expected value of x squared is the second differentiation of the characteristic function when you substitute at t equal to zero and you take just the minus. And now for any moment, for example, if you want to find the moment of x of 5, it can be very complicated if you want to integrate x of 5 times f x of x dx. Some, some, some equations can be very, very complicated to evaluate it this way. But now with this characteristic function, what you need, all what you need is to take the differentiation five times. So you differentiate the characteristic fun function of five times dt5, and then you divide by 
1 over j of 5, so it will be 1j actually. It will be divided by, by j because j times j equal to minus 1. Okay, and uh, and j of the power 4, it will be 1 because minus 1 minus one, times minus 1 is, is 1, and j of the power 5 will be just j. Okay, so that's what, what, what we get. So this is the reason that we call this characteristic function sometimes as moment generating function. So you can generate any moment. You can generate the mean, the mean square, the mean cube, the, any mean that you need. You, you can generate it easily with this uh, um, characteristic function. And now, if we make expansion of the characteristic function, this e of the bar jxt, if we make expansion for it, uh, if we take e for this one, so taking the exponent, uh, sorry, the, the, the expectation of this will be the expectation of 1 will be 1 plus j expectation of xt, okay, plus uh, uh, expectation of j xt squared divided by 2. And then you can take the expectation of x inside because x is the only random variable here. So you can take the expectation of x and the expectation of x is the moment. So actually, the characteristic function is the summation, uh, related summation to the to the all moments of the random variable. And this, this characteristic also is very interesting that, that it is from i equal to zero up to infinity. So all the moments of any random variable that you can you can construct the, the, the characteristic function. So the characteristic function can be used from the Fourier transform of the um, the probability density function, and then it can be used to generate the moments. But also there is another way. For example, uh, uh, if based on observation, you know the mean, you know the mean, and you know the mean square, and you, mon you know the mean cube, and you know the mean of the power four up to mean of xn. So you know the mean, of course, you cannot know infinity number of means. Okay, but let's say you you are out of averages. So assume that you uh, you can or you or you observe or you measure that up to let's say seven or eight eight moments. Okay, you can use them actually to approximate. You can use them to approximate to find the characteristic function. You can use them to approximate. To, de to define what is the characteristic function. And from the characteristic function, you can also uh, uh, estimate the probability DC function. So actually this characteristic functions gives us a strong and nice tool that to, to find the, uh, 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 the, the properties of, of uh, uh, any random variables or, or any random process. Okay. Uh, there is another, uh, actually, in some books, you might find that they don't use uh, uh, any j or, or any complex number. So they say that the characteristic function is the expected value of e, just they say that, for example, xt, and they don't use j at all. Okay, so actually, this is the same. The, uh, uh, they call them, some books, they call them that, that moment generating function. Some, some books. So in this case, it is the same as the characteristic function, but instead of t, you can substitute like minus jt. So it will be the same, actually. There is no big difference between the moment generating function or the some books they use them without complex number and with using complex numbers. Okay. Here I gave several examples, okay, about how to use them, but I will solve different example in the uh, 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 on the whiteboard to have uh, then you have more more uh, like examples to understand the topic so let me again have the whiteboard again okay <clears throat> assume that you have certain process and in this certain process, like random random voltage generator, and this random voltage generator X, it generates it generates, let's say, minus two volt, zero volt, three volt, five volt, and they generate them with the probability belongs to, respectively, minus two it gives it like twenty percent of the time. Zero, it gives it 0.10% of the time. A three volt, 
it gives it, let's say, 0.40% of the time. Of course, now you should be able to find the, the rest because the total probability must be one. So now we have, uh, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.1 is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0.4 is 0 0.7. Then 0, 0, uh, for 5 volt must be 0 0.3. Now I am just, I mean, just like example comes to my mind now, okay? So we have now the probability for each of them, okay? Now, if I ask you, what is the mean of this x? Of course, the mean of this x equal to, you take every one and you multiply it with its probability. So it is minus 2 times 0.2 plus 0 times 0.1 plus, plus 3 times 0.4 plus 5 times 0.3, then you get the mean. Okay, but now if I ask you what is the expected value of x squared, and then of course it will be minus 2 squared will be 4 times 0 0.2, plus 0 squared is 0 times 0 0.1, plus 3 squared is 9 times 0 0.4, plus 5 squared is 25 times 0 0.3, and so on. So you can find any one of them, okay? Uh, now, what is the characteristic function of this probability mass function. So the, the characteristic function is the expected value of E to the power Jxt. Okay? E to the power Jxt. Okay. Now, this, the expected value of this one for, for voltage equal to minus 2, it will be E to the power J, okay, minus 2t. What is the probability of being 2 is 0 0.2. This will be multiplied by 0 0.2. Plus, if the power zero is one times point one, so it becomes plus point one, plus. Okay, if the power, then uh, we can see here. So uh, the, the the third voltage is a three, so it becomes e of the power j three t. Probability is point four times point four, plus e. The last one is j five t times probability is point three. Actually, now that you have the the characteristic function, so this is the characteristic function of of the random variable x. Okay. Uh, if you want to calculate, for example, let us check if if we if we did any mistake. So now phi x of zero must be one. Let us see. So of course, when this zero, if the power zero is one. For each one, so it becomes 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 equal to 1, which is correct. Now, if you want to find the mean, you differentiate this characteristic function. Of course, you, uh, uh, you may say that it is easier to do it in this way. Yes, I agree with you, but just explanation now how, how it works, okay? So the differentiation of phi x of t with respect with t is equal to Okay, now you take the differentiation of this one, it becomes minus j2 e j2 t, okay, times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1. When you take the differentiation with respect to t, this will be zero because it is not function in t, okay, so it becomes zero plus zero, and plus this will be 3 j e j3 t times 0.4, okay, plus j5 times e j5 t times 0.3. Now, you substitute here at the, the expected value of x equal to, as we said, 1 divided by j, differentiation of t with respect to t at t equal to 0. And now, we need, of course, j will cancel each j here in the equation. And when you put t equal to zero, it will be once. Then we will have here minus two times 0.2 plus three times 0.4 plus five times 0.3, exactly as we show before. Okay, you, you can take the second differentiation and approve that it will work the same and so on. So this is the, the concept of moment generated function of this uh, uh, characteristic function. Okay, now let us go to some not discrete case, but we go to the continuous case. What if 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 you have like like uh, uh, let's say we have this uniform distribution from minus one up to four, for example. Okay, so the distribution here, if if 
this is x, so it is f x of x. Of course, here will be one divided by five because the area must be one. Okay, now the characteristic function of t is equal to the integration from minus infinity up to infinity. And here we put a e j x t, and then we uh, use the uh, the distribution. The probability function here is fixed, is equal to one over five, so it becomes one over five dx, and we take the integration from minus one up to four. Okay, so this will be one over five. The integration of e j x t will be e j x t divided by divided by j x. Okay, and then we take the integration from minus one up to four. So in this case, will be one over five. We substitute at four, so it becomes e j four t divided by. We can take also j as common factor outside, okay? So it becomes ej for t, okay? Divided by four minus minus, because this will be minus, so it becomes plus e minus jt divided by one, of course, and it will be the same, okay? So now we have, this is the characteristic function of, of x, uh, of t, sorry. Here it will be t, but here x. Okay, so this is the characteristic function of this of this uniform distribution. Okay, now let us find the characteristic function of uh, uh, exponential distribution with uh, with uh, rate lambda. So now the distribution of of this um, let us call it y of y of y equal to lambda e minus lambda y, and here y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, the characteristic function now, it becomes phi y of t equal to, again, integration from minus infinity up to infinity, e j y t, and here multiplied by probability function, we take we can take this lambda outside, then of course, y is always greater than zero, so we need to start the integration from zero, because less than zero, it will be zero. Okay, and this will be multiplied by e minus lambda y dy. Okay, and this equal to lambda is outside here, and then we have integration from zero to infinity. E of we can take j t minus lambda, and we take we take y as a common factor of common variable here dy. When you take the integration with respect to y, this will be lambda divided by j t minus lambda. This is the integral. And then we have the integration j t minus lambda times y of from zero up to infinity. And now, of course, you can take the minus as a common factor here. So it becomes here minus and this becomes a plus. Okay. So it is better to do it in this way because the integration when we have minus uh, up to minus infinity, then we will have zero. So, and, and in this case, it becomes, um, uh, when we take the integration, it becomes actually the same as we did it here. So now when it is, the integration is for infinity, okay, this will be zero and minus one. So it will be minus one. And here, of course, we have minus here because due to this, and then we will have the, 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 the result is lambda divided by j t minus lambda. This will be the, uh, 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 the characteristic function of of the uh, exponential distribution. Again, of course, you can find the mean by differentiating this one and then substitute with t equal to zero. But um, this is already there in the book. But let us uh, do it in, uh, uh, ask another question. What will be the characteristic function of z equal to x plus y? Assume that x is the same as we did before x is this one. This is x, so it is uniform from minus 1 up to 4. And then we have already this characteristic function. We find the characteristic function. And now we have the characteristic function of y, this one. What will be the characteristic function of z? The characteristic function of z, of t, and x and y are independent. So it becomes the characteristic function of x times the characteristic function of y. Simply like that. 
no integration, no convolution, nothing. Just you multi multiply them together. So it will be it will be one divided by five j. It will be one divided by five j. Oh, let us do it in this way. Yes. So it will be e to the power j for t. Okay, I forget now. It is plus. Okay, plus e to the power j t divided by because I think it was the, all of them divided by five five j. Yes, yes, it will be. Or I can multiply here four. Then it will be twenty j. Okay, and times the uh, the characteristic function of y, which is given here, so it is lambda divided by j t minus lambda. So now we have the characteristic function of of t uh, or of z, which is the, the summation of both of them. Of course, now if you want or or if you are interested to find the inverse for a transform in order to find the distribution of z of z of course you can find it by by finding the inverse for a transform of this equation and you can use this is actually the reason that i show you how to use symbolic toolbox or, or symbolic uh, um, package in octave so you can try to find the the inverse of this one to, in order to find the probability dc function but it is not needed because with this one you can actually find the mean, the variance, any moment that you want to find, you can find them by differentiating this equation, by differentiating this equation. Okay, so uh, let us go back to the... Chapter. So that's this is related now the concept of of probability function and the characteristic function and how to derive them from each other and here you can see uh, uh, because I need to cover this um, to complete so I will not derive everything uh, today in order to complete this part today so uh, uh, here we show how to find already how to find the uh, exponential function and also how to find it for the for the normal distribution, normal distribution is very important. And then we show mathematically how to find the characteristic function in case of a uh, uh, Gaussian or normal distribution. So we take the exponent of e to the power j x t, and then we take the integration e j x, uh, j x t uh, times e. Of course, this is the mean and variance of the normal distribution. Then what I did here, Simply, I expand this one. So x minus mu square is x square minus 2 mu x plus mu square. Okay. And then I added jxt, as you can see here. So I added also jxt to this, to this summation. Okay. Sorry. That, uh, and this, of course, because I make uh, like common factors. So this will be multiplied by two sigma square, as you can see it here. Okay, so we have here j x t times two sigma square, as it is given here, and then I added x the, the factors of x together and uh, x squared together, and uh, this one, and then I complete the squares. By completing the squares, you can have uh, expanded in this form. So now you have this square, and you have this as extra factor, and when you take the exponent of all these functions, of all these functions, will be just multiplication. So you can take this part outside the integration, as you can see it's here. And then you have the, the rest of the integration from minus infinity up to infinity, and the integration under the curve of the normal distribution equal to one. So all this part is equal to one. What is left? It is left only this part. So then the, the characteristic function of normal distribution is e of the power j times mu. What is mu? Is the mean or the average of the normal distribution times the, the, the variable of the characteristic function is t minus sigma squared 
is the variance of the normal distribution times t squared divided by two. Actually, this this relation is is important, especially in information theory. So, if you, uh, you study maybe later some advanced topics in information theory, you will find that this characteristic function is very important because it it, it we we can deduce the 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 the, the uh, uh, basic, we can find all moments of the normal distribution, and also we can build some important relations in information theory. We can come to this uh, maybe in uh, examples later in, in the coming lectures, okay? Um, what about multinomial distribution? Multinomial distribution. In multinomial distribution, it will be exactly the same form, but instead of single mean and single variable, we have we have multiple uh, mean and and variables. In this case, the characteristic function will be vector of t. So we have here t1, t2 up to tn because we have n different uh, random variables. So it will be t, t transpose times the vector of the means minus t transpose rxx, rxx is, is the covariance matrix t divided by two. Before I continue, um, I I think you, you might confuse now. Let me go back to the whiteboard to explain those things in more details because otherwise you will you will not be able to to continue the discussion. Uh, I like to explain this to you over only two two uh, parameters. So we have we have, or two random variables. We have joint distribution, normal distribution x one and x two. Okay, we showed before. You can find in the book that this is equal to square root two by. Then we have the determinant, determinant of matrix uh, matrix R, okay, and of the power of square. This will be, and then we will have exponent of minus half. Uh, it will be x minus mu x transpose R x x inverse times x minus mu x without transpose. What this mean and how could we calculate it by hand? Okay, this is important to know. Okay, since it is two element, so the matrix will be two by two. The matrix will be two by two. This R matrix. What is R matrix? It is already there in the book, but I will repeat it here. So this will be sigma x1 square, the variance of x1. This will be the covariance between x1 and x2. And this will be the covariance of x1 and x2. And this will be the variance of x2 square. Okay, the 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 the, uh, the variance or the the uh, of x1 square equal to the expected value of of what? It will be x. 1 minus mu of the mean of x1 square. That's all. Okay. And sigma x square is the variance of x square. This will be the expected value of x2 minus it is mean then square. Okay. What is the covariance of x1 and x2? The covariance between x1 and x2 will be the expected value of x1 minus mu x1 times x2 minus mu of x2. We call this as covariance. And I told you before that in, in case that x1 and x2, they are independent or they are uncorrelated, this will be zero. Okay, but generally it is not zero. Generally it is not, it is not zero. Okay, uh, to make things easier, I will give you example. So now I give you this R x x equal to, let's say this equal to uh, two, and this will be one, one, and this will be, let's say seven. Okay, this is R x x. What that mean? Uh, it is very important to, to focus with me and concentrating now. Two is the variance of x one, seven, is the variance of x2. One 
is the covariance between x1 and x2. This is called the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix must be symmetric because the covariance between x1 and x2 is the same as the covariance between x2 and x1. Okay, so in this case, we... Okay. Ha. Equal to covariance of x2 and x1. So it means that Rxx must be symmetric. What is the symmetric? What symmetric means? What is the means of symmetric? Okay. Symmetric means that when you take the transpose, it will be the same. When you take the transpose, it will be the same. What is the transpose? The transpose that you rotate the uh, every vector, for example, 2, 1, if you rotate the, the above 2, 1, the first row to become a column, so it will be the same, 2, 1. If you take the second row and you make it as a column, it will be the same because it is 1, 7, and it will be 1, 7 again. So every cova uh, covariance matrix is symmetric. Okay, remember this one. Okay, now, um, how could we find, because we need here, as you can see, we need our xx inverse. We need to, to, ha to have the inverse of x1 uh, and x2. And how could we build this function and how to substitute in these values? Okay, the determinant of rxx, I explained this before, so we multiply the, the main diagonal minus the other diagonal, so it will be 2 times 7 is 14, 14 minus 1 is equal to 13, so the determinant of rxx equal to 13. Okay, how to find the inverse of rxx? I recommend you to go to, go to the, uh, the linear algebra course to find how to find the inverse, of course, a, um, um, in linear algebra that we uh, that we talk in uh, in uh, like uh, I think it was in fourth semester in the in the uh, in the faculty, um, we used to have by hand to find up to three by three matrix, but it is long process to find the three by three. So here in this course, we for the calculation by hand, the maximum will be two by two, as you can see it here. But of course, uh, in the reality, if you need more, you can use Octave or or you can use uh, uh, any symbolic, even symbolic uh, toolbox to find the inverse of larger matrices to be in a closed form. But anyhow, here uh, to find the Rxx uh, inverse, first you divide by the determinant, which is 1 divided by 13, and then you swap the main diagonal, so it becomes 7 and 2, and you take the negative sign for the other diagonal, minus 1 and minus 1. Now, this is the inverse of Rxx. Okay, so this is the simple way to find the inverse of any 2 by 2 matrix. Okay? Let us now substitute in the equation. So we have here, uh, um, it was E of x minus mu. It was transpose and it was multiplied by Rxx inverse and then multiplied by x minus mu without transpose. What that mean? Uh, I like to uh, go with you like numerically step by step. Okay, this is the exponent of E. So let us deal directly with this, with this number, okay? So uh, uh, without E. So without E, we have Ex minus mu transpose Rxx inverse times mu, uh, sorry, x minus mu. Okay. This one actually is a vector which has x min x1 minus mu1, x2 minus mu2, and we have transpose times Rxx inverse times, again, x1 minus mu1 and x2 minus mu2 without transpose. You can see that the original vector is 2 by 1, 
when you take the transpose, it becomes one by two. And this matrix is two by two. And this vector is two by one. So the result will be one by one. The result will be scalar. So the exponent of a scalar number, okay? Let us do it together. So now we have here, x1 minus mu1, the first element. The second element is x2 minus mu2. Remember that, why I did it in this way? Because I took the transpose. I took the transpose. Times rxx inverse, I computed in this way. Okay, so I will take 1 over 13 outside. It is a fixed, fixed number. And this will be multiplied by, I forget it. So it is 7 minus 1. Okay, it will be 7 minus 1 minus 1, 2. And this will be multiplied again by x1 minus mu1, x2 minus mu2. Okay. I hope that you still remember how to perform this multiplication, but I will do it again here uh, to remind you. Okay, 1 over 13, forget about it, because it is just a fixed number. So I will multiply the first element in this vector by the first element here, a plus the second element, uh, we multiply row by column. The second element by the second uh, 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 element in this in this uh, column. So it becomes 1 over 13 times. This will be 7 x1 minus 7 mu1. Okay. This is the first element by the first element. Then minus, minus, minus becomes a plus. A plus x2 minus mu mu2 okay so this is the first element now by multi by multiplying this row by this first column now we multiply again this row by the second column so the second element remember here is one by two and this is two by two so the result will be one by two so the second element will be will be minus one times x1 minus mu1 will be minus x1 plus mu1. Then the second element plus 2x2 two two minus 2 mu2. Two. Okay, so this is the second element. This multiplied by, now, now we, we perform this first two multiplication. We still we have the last multiplication with the last with, with the last vector, which is x1 minus mu1 and x2 minus mu2. Okay, so now we perform this the last one. So the first element in this row multiplied by the first element in this column, and the second element in this row multiplied by the second element in this column. So still we have one over 13 outside, and then we multiply this together. So you can see now. This one is one by two. This one is two by one. So the result will be a scalar. Okay, we don't have vector anymore. So it will be seven x one minus seven mu one. Okay, plus. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me check. Uh, this was minus actually. So it will be minus. So I don't know why it do plus. So this will be minus minus. Yes, let me. This minus and this will be plus. Yes. Yeah, so it will be uh, uh, minus x2 plus mu2. All this element will be multiplied by the first element in this column. So it will be multiplied by x1 minus mu1. Okay, then plus this element multiply this element. So it will be plus, we have minus x1 plus mu1 plus 2 x2 minus 2 mu2 and then multiplied by x2 minus mu2. Of course, I, it will take a little bit long time to make the multiplication, but it is a routine multiplication. It is nothing I mean special. So you multiply x1 which with, with each element here. So it becomes 7 x1 squared minus 7 mu1 x1 minus x2 x1 plus u2 x1 this is the first element in each element here. So we take the, now the mu and we multiply also in each element. So it becomes minus mu1 7x1 plus 7 mu1 squared 
plus mu1 x2 then minus mu1 mu2 okay so this is the first multiplication and the plus again a plus it becomes uh, uh, the first limit is minus so minus x1 x2 becomes minus minus x1 x2 then plus mu1 x2 uh, plus 2x2 square minus 2 mu 2x2. The last element is minus uh, plus mu 2x1 minus mu 2 mu 1 uh, minus 2 mu 2x2 finally plus 2 mu 2 square. Uh, by the way, usually uh, when you start your your your, your um, as, uh, I mean, advanced study and making simulations either in your master or inshallah in your PhD. Um, we don't need usually to do these calculations by hand. Why I give it now by hand, I would like to show you how these things works. Okay, how it works. So um, step by step, but generally that uh, usually we, we leave it in this form. Actually, we leave everything as as it is original form. So this is a vector transpose times Rxx inverse times the vector, the column vector. So we have row vector times matrix times uh, a column vector. That, that's it. Okay. And then we have the determinant of R square. That what we, uh, this is the way that, that, uh, uh, um, uh, of course, this is, should be under the square root. So um, everything should be under the square root. Anyhow. So this is the way that we calculate it, okay? This is the way that we 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 we, we perform the calculations, okay? But uh, based on that, you can find the characteristic function. You can make your calculations. You can find what will be the response. For example, if we have, let me go to that. For example, you have signal plus noise. And then let's say that you receive a signal equal to some uh, coding or decoding matrix times X plus some random, and this Y uh, is vector also, some random number, which is given by B, for example. Okay, so in other words, we have Y, you receive a signal Y1, Y2 up to YM equal to A matrix, decoder for example or encoder or whatever and this matrix is m by n then your vector information is x1 x2 up to xn then a plus noise or a plus another vector that it is p1 p2 up to up to bm okay so now in this relation we, you are interested to find what is the distribution of y of the received signal you might have this in your in, in in your future study and it is very common by the way but in phds and and this advanced study and papers you can find this many times okay now when you deal with this one actually you don't have to go to calculate everything in details as we did now in the two by two case but you can deal with them as vectors so we have vector y this is vector y let me do it like bold it is vector y equal to matrix A times X plus P. Then we can find what is the distribution of Y, Y vector, okay? If you have the distribution of X. Now, if you have been informed that the distribution of X is multinomial, distrib normal distribution with correlation RXX. So you have been given, this is the distribution of RXX. What will be the mean and variance of y what will be the mean mean and variance of y so the mean of y actually i i will do it for for you here for uh, simplification here so expected value of y will be a a is 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 normal uh, is is matrix but it is not random variable so we we take it outside so it will have here the expected value of x plus the expected value of B. So if you have been informed that B is Gaussian also, but it has zero mean. So the expected value of B will be zero. Okay. And 
the expected value of x is the vector of mu. So this will be a times mu x. Okay, this will be mu, mu, mu y. So the mean vector of y equal to the matrix A multiplied the mean vector of x. So that's it. So you don't need to go through the details. But actually, I, uh, in purpose, that I wanted to show you how to make it even for simple case. And you can see even two by two case, it is quite long. It is very simple. The calculation, nothing special here. So we just multiplications between uh, uh, several numbers, just, just normal multiplication, but still it can be, uh, it requires a lot of time and sometimes it is easy also to make mistakes during these calculations. But we need to know the concept. All the concept th that now you understand it, maybe in a quiz or something that you, you, you will be asked to do it for, for example, giving you what is the mean and X, just to practice yourself with some simple calculations, but in, in, in real research, you are not going to that level. And this can be done by the computers for you. So you don't need, need to do it by, 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 by your hand, but it is also important to, to understand the basics. So you, you, are, you know what you are doing. This is important that you know what you are doing. When you make the multiplication, when you take the inverse of some matrix or something, you know what you are doing and how it works but you don't need to do it every time yourself, okay? Um, actually, um, here I gave more uh, analysis in case of, uh, uh, of multiple uh, like uh, elements, like, um, okay, this is, this is one, one more example in the multinomial normal distribution. And after that, I went through more details, but but uh, like you can see that in case that what I show now to you, how to calculate the mean and how to calculate the variance. And um, there are also some more analysis here. And I give a few theorems, but uh, this is actually what I give now. No problem. So you know this, okay? And uh, the covariance also, you can find it easily, the covariance, because the covariance is the expected value. Okay, let me show the, you the covariance, but don't pay a lot of attention about this part, because this part, we need it in some advanced course, which is not given or not covered in this course. But it is it is good that you know a little bit about it. Uh, um, I, I, there's another course, Estimation Theory, where it is also one chapter in this book where, where we cover the Kalman filters, for example. Then we need a lot of details about this analysis, but for this course, uh, just know it in general. So don't worry that you go in that details, but let me just show you one simple thing and very fast, fast, fast way before we complete the lecture or finish the lecture today. Okay. We said that if you have like y vector equal to a matrix, times x vector plus some like, let's say, b uh, vector, okay? And now uh, you uh, this vector y, we said that it is m by one. The length, the, the, the size is m by one. Matrix A must be m by n. Uh, vector x will be n by one. And this will be the same size as y, so it will be m by one. Okay, now when we make, uh, 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 assume that you, you want to, co to compute the expected value of R or the, this uh, expect R, uh, Y, Y, the, the covariance matrix of Y. The covariance matrix of Y is given as this way. Remember, R, Y, Y equal to the expected value of Y minus the mean of Y Okay, so this, the, the, the dimension will be m by one times y minus the vector of y and this transpose. This will be one by m. So the result will be m by m. m by m is the dimension of the covariance matrix of y. Okay, now I like to find the covariance matrix in terms of the covariance matrix of x. But how will be r, y, y? If I know 
RXX. In, in, in smart antenna, in beam forming, in MIMO systems, in massive MIMO, in satellite communication, we always need this such kind of calculations. We always need them. Okay, so how to find it? Uh, also in image processing, for those who are working in images, for example, that uh, restoration of image and many, many different applications. It is, it, is, it is hard to count how many applications where we need such, such, such analysis, okay? So uh, to find this one, you take the expectation of, okay, this will be, remember that uh, because here we have transpose, so y minus mu y a transpose is nothing but y transpose minus mu to transpose. That's it. So you, you just distribute your transpose here. So it will be like y and try to multiply everyone with the other element. So I, I, I'm trying to do it in the in the simplest way, okay? Not, not necessarily to be the most efficient way, but the simplest way. So this will be the expected value of y times y transpose, y by y transpose, minus y by mu y transpose, okay? Then the second element, minus y, okay? Times y transpose, then finally plus mu y times mu y transpose. Now you can expect uh, distribute this ex expectation inside as a linear operation. So you will have expected value of y times y transpose minus minus. You take the expected value of y is nothing but but y u times y u transpose, and this would be minus y u times y u transpose. And this will be plus mu y times mu y transpose. Okay. Then this will be expected value of y times y transpose. And you can see minus, minus, minus is will be minus two plus one. It will be minus, sorry, it will be minus mu y times mu y transpose. This will be r, r y y okay how to solve this one you need now to find what is the expected value of y expected value of y times y uh, transpose so we can do that because we know that y we said that equal to a x plus b okay then the expected value of y times y transpose equal to the expected value of a x plus b this is y times y transpose you take the transpose, remember, A times B, all transpose equal to B transpose times A transpose. So this will be multiplied by X transpose, A transpose plus B transpose. Again, we multiply each element by element, so we will have A, it will be expected value of AX times X transpose times A transpose, okay, and plus uh, AX times B transpose plus B X transpose A transpose plus B times B transpose. Now we substitute the, the, or distribute the expectation inside. So we have A times expected value of X X transpose times A transpose plus A, uh, the expected value of X is mu X B transpose plus B mu x transpose times a transpose and plus b times b transpose. This will be the expected value of y times y transpose. And finally, if you want now to uh, substitute this, uh, um, it will take mo more time than uh, the lectures. We have still 10 minutes. So uh, uh, I will not uh, do it uh, step by step, but if now we substitute here we have expected value of y times y, uh, y i transpose and substitute it here. And for the mean of y, we show that the mean of y, the mean of this y equal to a times the mean of x plus b. Okay, so now substitute with this one here and substitute for this one there. 
So actually, every element here will cancel each other. And finally, you will have R, Y, Y, okay, equal to the, 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 um, uh, the uh, covariance matrix of Y will be A times R, X, X of A transpose. This will be the final result that you will have. And this could be approved easily, actually, if you substitute with this mathematical manipulations, you will have them in this form. So the, 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 the covariance of Y will be the covariance of X, but it will be multiplied by A. It will be transformed or projected by matrix A and A uh, 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 transform, uh, transpose. Sorry. So the, the, uh, uh, this is for, even I don't want actually to go through the details here, as I told you that you will need it you will not need it in this course at least, but it is good that to know how things are going on in uh, um, about this topic, okay? Yes, oh, sorry, not this one. I want to go to the lecture to end today. Yes. This is what I, I now show. And um, the last part in this, uh, in this, uh, 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 like uh, in part one, is related to the limits and bounds. Um, actually, uh, in many situations, when you are working in a, in a practice or working in uh, to evaluate some random process, physical process, telecom in telecommunication signals, for example, in social science. So, in many situations, we don't know the probability density function, and we don't know. The characteristic function, so, okay? Well, uh, in general, we have no idea about how this process is going on, especially that if you have a few number of samples. So when you have few number of samples, it is hard, really hard, to build reliable, like, estimation for the distribution or for the characteristic function or what, for whatever um, material, uh, number or, or function or algorithm representing the behavior of the uh, distribution uh, or, or, or the random process. So in this case, we need to have some general limits or bounds. So the general limits of bounds, for example, uh, I will not give you now the uh, derivation, even the derivations are given in details here in the chapter, but I will talk in general. So in general, they say that the probability, the probability that any random variable x subtracting from it is mean so uh, the absolute value of any random variable x subtracting it is mean to be greater than some number sigma for any sigma for any sigma of course sigma must be positive because here we take the absolute value so for any positive sigma is always less than or equal to the variance of x divided by sigma square divided by sigma square okay uh, 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 let me take a simple example. If I give you give you these numbers, one, two, three, four, okay? And I asked you, what is the probability that the fifth number will be greater than seven? I didn't give you any probability DC function, nothing. I just, I, you have a few, num a few samples and you want to see if it is possible to have, uh, what is the probability that I will have that this number to be greater than seven? Okay, actually from the samples, from the small samples that you have, you can estimate mu x, that mu x equal to one plus two plus three plus four divided by four. So it will be three plus three, six, it will be 10 divided by four. Okay, and now I want to see what is the probability that to be greater than seven. So I can substitute here and then I can find the value by taking the sigma squared x divided by, sigma, by this uh, 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 delta delta square. And also in this, um, another bound, you can see that in, in bound is that we are not talking about uh, distribution. So they are just general bound. For example, another bound, which is very important bound as well, is called Chernoff, Chernoff bound. Chernoff bound, it says that we, I don't go through the um, derivation because of the strict time. Uh, but it says that the probability that x for any random variable to be greater than or equal to zero is less than the expectation of 
e of the power lambda x. Okay, this is a general bound, general boundary, that it is not necessary that you know what is the distribution of x. But you might ask, but I, I need the distribution of x to find the expectation, and you are right. But however, uh, uh, this function actually is used in order to find some interesting results in 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 in, in some um, uh, like uh, engineering problems, and sometimes also we can we can um, uh, approximate this expectation. For example, if you have x equal to one, two, three, and this was probability 0.5, 0.2, and 0.3, then I can find the expectation of e to the power lambda x as it will be as I showed before. It will be e to the power lambda times one times probability 0.5 plus uh, e lambda, here is two, two lambda, probability is 0.2 times 0.2 plus e to the power lambda is here, uh, lambda times uh, three lambda, and it is probability is 0.3. So this could be, uh, get up, uh, give us some, uh, it is called maximum likelihood estimation of this value, okay? Um, I don't think that we will need these bounds, at least in this course, but in the future, in estimation theory, we need them a lot, actually. And also, we, the final one is called Markovian inequality. Markov inequality is also some interesting inequality here, that the probability for any positive distribution x to be greater than or equal to a is always less than the mean of this x divided by a. Okay? So for any distribution, if you have any positive distribution x, okay, and you know that the mean of this x equal to 5, and I asked you, what is the probability that x to be greater than or equal to 10? Simply, this probability is less than or equal to the mean. The mean is 5 divided by 10. So you can, you can tell me that the probability will be always less than 0.5. Even you don't know the distribution of x. All what you know, that x is a positive random variable. This is what uh, uh, all what you know. And then you can find this probability in general way, okay? So actually, those bounds are useful in case that we don't have full information about the process that they are in front of us. Um, this is actually the first part of the probability theory, and the second part that we will start, inshallah, next week, it will be stochastic process. You will learn a lot about the stochastic process. Now, we have signal. How to, to, how to apply what we learn if, you, if we have if we have signals. So this will be the, the topic of the uh, next part, inshallah uh, ta'ala. So now actually, um, by completing this first part of probability theory, uh, you can see that we went through several um, uh, basic stuff and also a little bit advanced stuff. Um, but believe me, what you are studying in this course, after completing this course, and if you understand and uh, will uh, like be aware about, I don't say 100%, but if you are aware about 80% of the contents of this course, uh, you will have the capability to do advanced research after that. After that, you can go directly. Uh, I mean, once you start to study some certain topics and in this certain topics you, you, you want to write or you want to analyze them, you will have a strong tool in your hand. And maybe... Dr. Farhat also, uh, uh, he has uh, uh, like uh, uh, strong academic uh, background. He can tell you that once you, you know these tools, it becomes much easier for you to publish papers. You can publish papers even in advanced uh, like journals. Once you know these tools very well, and then you can study the topics in telecommunication, in power system, distribution of like flux in certain some transformer and you want, there, there are some like disturbance due to nonlinearity of the material and how to express this mathematically and how to analyze them, how to find the probability that you will have very high temperature spot in some in some body that it might melt the, the, the material there and making a lot of scientific uh, like contribution or scientific analysis, it becomes uh, like, uh, this is the tool that you will need to do such kind of 
mathematical uh, uh, analysis. So now you are studying um, the tool. Uh, the tool is where it will be applied. Of course, it depends on what you are studying. So now we end the first part of this uh, of this course, and then we see, inshallah, in the next part when we talk about stochastic processes. I will stop recording now, and then I open the time for questions and discussion, inshallah. <laughs>